was asking alms or begging. Verse 3 says, when Peter and John, who were about to go into the temples, uh, saw him, he asked an alms, asked for some money. Peter looked at him with John, said to him, look on us, look at us. The man gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something. But then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I give, I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately <clears throat> his feet and ankle bones received strength. He, leaping up, stood and walked, entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wandering. So a lot of porches, a lot of places where people gather. But in this case, here is a man that from his mother's womb, is carried, and he's carried, and he's laid at the temple gate. In other words, this man is carrying his legs. Ever since he was a little boy, he's carrying his legs. Instead of his legs carrying him, he's carrying his legs. It's much like a Christian who is saved, who has to carry the Holy Spirit, but never feels like the Holy Spirit is carrying them. And I'm not talking about, you know, speaking in tongues, because that's what we like to limit the Holy Spirit to. But you need to start to realize that I'm not handicapped anymore. Amen. That when you got saved, the Lord gave you the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't. And, and you need to grow to the place where you don't need people to carry you all your Christian experience. What the Lord was showing me, that too many of us need folk to carry us. Praise the Lord. Mario, bring me that, uh, bring me that wheelchair here. Too many of us from our mother's womb in our Christian experience we need folk to carry us. Now, I'm a little demonstrative at times, but I want you to sit there, son. Sit, sit there. This, you may have to push it out a little bit. We're going to get in, and it'll probably come out as you get in. No, try to get in. It ain't going to fall, whatever it do. Huh? You ain't going to get in? Okay. Okay. Come here, uh, Junior. Here, you help me then. You, you do this. I won't have to do this. Because this is exactly, here, just stay in the center here. Yeah, it'll come out more than that. On the straight here, just the straight. Most people, their entire Christian life, and what we have been doing, even as pastors, and this is what the Lord showed me in our churches, all we're doing is pushing these people for 38 years. We're pushing them. Turn them around. Just keep pushing them around in a circle here. Bring them around. We're pushing them. Anytime you try to prod them, that you need to get up out of that wheelchair, they comp an attitude with us. Yeah, they, you know, you try to tell them it's time for you to take the word yourself. Keep pushing. You need to get out of your hateful attitude. You know, now we ain't talking about physical attitude here. We ain't talking about healing because he can't walk. We ain't talking about because he's he blind. We're talking about get out your hateful attitude, get out your unloving attitude, get out your lazy attitude, get out your sinful attitude. Folk is getting attitude. They just push the Bible away. Push it away. Push it away. Don't, don't want to hear that. 
Don't want to hear that. You know, you keep on, you know, come to church, come to church, come to church, come on, serve God. You know, give and get you out your financial situation. And he says, all you're doing is you just keep pushing in a stroller. He didn't call. He said, I didn't call you to push him in a stroller. And you got a, a church full of handicapped people that all you're doing is pushing them in strollers. And you'd rather have a bunch of handicapped people depending on you, most of you, rather than have nobody. You're telling them, come out your sin. Come out your weakness. Read your Bible. Get that person out your life. This will help you break that habit. Here, this will help you break that habit. Pray, at least in the morning. But he claimed he got God. He got as much God as the preacher and everybody else. Can't nobody tell him what to do. Stop. Stop that. Stop fornicating. Stop drinking. Stop doing drugs. But you can't judge me. Jesus is coming soon. You're handicapped. He said that's a picture of the church. That needs to be washed with the word. And when you start washing them with the word, they just roll right out. And the bad part about it, you stay right there. Pastor Lee, do me a favor. Bring me that, that other thing over there, that, that walker. You stay right there. See, he had to deal with me in pictures because I'm slow. Then he take me to the Bible. Here, now, now, now you take that walker and get behind it. And so, so this way he showed me. He said, so you got now, I want you to push him and you. He said, so, he say, so this, 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 this how I go. He handicapped too, spiritually. He won't get, now both of y'all, you need to stop what you're doing too. But he won't stop what he's doing and, and, and read his word. But he keep pushing him. And, and that's what you got the handicap pushing the handicap. And it, it ain't that we weak in area, but the problem is he do push it off. He don't want he don't he push it, he, he don't want it either. He don't want it either. But they all want to go and say claim they're going to heaven, they love the Lord. You got the weak keep pushing the weak, but they only use the house of God as a ceremonial kind of place to come to relieve the conscience. But, but don't want to take the word to heart themselves. Don't want to ever spend time with the Holy Spirit. Don't want to just go right out and go back to your handicapped life. But when you meet Jesus, there won't be no strollers. There won't be nobody pushing you at the judgment seat. You'll be standing up for that one. Won't be crippled on the floor. Mama and them won't be pushing where I had to. I couldn't come to church because I was pushing that one. That's what he showed me. He said, you got the handicap pushing the handicap, making excuses because that one wants to make excuses for them. Here, why don't y'all receive Jesus and, and, and as your Lord and say, <laughs> and we ain't talking about physical healing here. We're talking about spiritual healing. Jesus loves you, and he wants to get you up out of there. You don't have to spend all your money on. <laughs> y'all don't want Jesus? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, he loves you anyway. <laughs> 
Thank you for coming. Thank you. He don't have room enough. He said, Peter, when you're strong, strengthen your brother. <laughs> go, go, push, him, push him on home. Push him on t- to the weed house. Push him. Well, there you go. <laughs> now, he said from your mother's womb, he was lame and he was carried. People are being carried from a little bitty person. The the bad attitude, the personality issues. And this ain't about you got to die to become a Christian. And you got to die daily to remain one because the Holy Spirit is going to point you out and say you need to change that. You can't keep living talking like that. You can't li- keep living in unbelief. We weren't even talking about physical healing. Yeah, you know, you think, okay, well, I can't walk. I'm having trouble. And, and that's provision in this book for that. But he's not going to let you keep living in the I can'ts and I won'ts and, and what people won't help me and what people said about me and what people doing to me and all that kind of stuff. He won't let you do it. This man was taken daily and put in the temple. But look at what the scripture says here. It says, verse 6, it says, uh, verse 4, Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. He gave heed unto them. Verse 5 said, expecting to receive something. You got to change your attitude from somebody's always owe you something. You got to expect to receive something from Jesus. He expected at first, to receive something from man. People owe me something. What you going to give me? What you going to do for me? I'm looking at a human being. What you going to do for me? How you going to treat me? How you going to uh, uh, honor me or respect me? You got to start looking at Jesus. He said, hey, silver and gold, we ain't got nothing. We don't have nothing to give you. But what I got, I'm going to point you to the man who got something for you. Jesus has got something for you. Then he started expecting Jesus to do it. The Lord says, it's time out for pushing your stroller because you pouting, because you ain't recognized. Hello, because you ain't promoted, because ain't nobody running, dialing your phone number all day. Ain't nobody calling you, telling you, you know, you, that opens the door for you to get in the sin. You need to start saying, Lord, what do you have for me? He says, I got healing for you. Most of us are sick because we're looking at the wrong thing and the wrong person. Why don't y'all shout hallelujah, somebody? We walk around like somebody owe us something. Angry at the world. We need to stop begging and start expecting. Lift your hands and praise him. You say you got the Holy Ghost? Quit carrying it and start letting it carry you. The Holy Ghost doesn't come to make any of us feel better than the other person. It only makes you be a better you. He doesn't give it to you so that you are better than anybody. So you shouldn't have to worry about somebody think they better than you. Nobody's better than you. If you're thinking that way, you're already wrong. The Holy Ghost comes to make you a better you. And when you quit looking at people, expecting them to give you something, you will turn your attentions toward God. I'm looking at you. I'm expecting something. All of my help come from the Lord. All my blessings come from the Lord. He may use man. He will use man to bring it to you. But favor comes from God. Come on, give you, give the Lord a hand. Come on. You're going to kill yourself expecting white men, black men, a woman, or anybody else to bring it to you. And that's what they had to do. Take your eyes off of me. What Peter 
And John was saying, he looked at them, and they were saying, take your eyes off of me. Put your eyes on Jesus Christ. And he received the spirit that carried him. So when God gave you Jesus, he gave you a spirit that is supposed to carry you. No, not you carry it. You bring it to church and now it works. But when you go home, it don't work. When you, when you leave here, go to the job, it don't work. When you get sick, it don't work. When you, you know, have an issue, you're attacked, it don't work. Somebody talk about you, it don't work. Somebody don't show you love, it don't work. Somebody don't respect you, it don't work. Somebody try to hit on you, it don't work. Somebody flirt with you, it don't work. Come on. Somebody cuss you out, it don't work. He didn't give you a spirit that you have to pull it out and make it work. Come on, work like it's dice. He gave you a spirit that's supposed to carry you. His legs. Then he went in the temple leaping where he used to stay outside at the gate. Now he can come in leaping and praising God. And if your spirit don't cause you to leap and praise God, you got the wrong spirit. Amen. 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 You ain't got to sing, read the song. All, you, all I need is a little respect <laughs> when you get home. If you don't give me none, I'm going to get it from the Holy Spirit. Amen. If they don't give it to you on the job, I'm going to get it from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello? If the person of another race don't give it to you, I'm going to get it from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Healing for the whole man. Come one, come all. You ain't got to pay the deductible because the deductible was paid. But the way you get it is by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. If you don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield or you don't have one of them, some of them you got to pay a $15, $25, whatever, copay. But on this, faith will get it paid. You just believe. Amen. Whenever you get sick, praise God. Sickness. Amen. Fear is sickness. Depression is sickness. Loneliness is sickness. Persecution is sickness. Whatever you're dealing with. The first thing you got to admit is I'm sick. Lord, I'm, you know, we go to one another. I'm sick and tired. Go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sick. Or I'm being oppressed. Or I'm being hurt. Or I feel neglected. I'm lonely. I'm in despair. And if you do, the Lord is going to pour out his spirit on you. You ain't no sense of you going to your mechanic hollering about your kidney. Yeah. Right. You're wasting time. Yeah. He work on starters and transmissions. The Lord is your doctor. Yeah. And if you would drop your pride, yeah. many of us, Many of us, we say we don't need the church, but you need mercy to deliver you from your bitterness, from your acute self-awareness, from your insecurity, from your low self-esteem. They ain't got a hospital for that. If they do, it's called a mental ward, and they keep you, and you don't want to go. And many people are dealing with mental issues, fatigue of the mind, stress, heaviness in the head, in the thought life. Laughter on TV, don't, don't cut it. The funny channel, don't get it. Can't hardly laugh no more at nothing. So depressed. But the joy of the Lord is supposed to be that. Joy is like a medicine. When I'm telling people that the Holy Spirit has a sense of humor, there's many days he had me cracking up, telling jokes to me, and they was clean. I was just blown away at the humor of God. He never talked about nobody. 
But the way he can make stuff funny, if you don't know about it, you seek him for yourself. Because when I tried to tell y'all, y'all couldn't laugh. So it must have been a personal joke. Right. He didn't use no profanity. Yeah. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. And joy is like a medicine. Yes, Lord. Laughter is like a medicine. Yes, and some of us ain't laughed since we was on the playground. The whole world got to get drunk to laugh. They do. And even the drugs don't make you laugh no more. They just numb the senses. Because folk is trying to laugh. They need to express themselves. But Jesus is a doctor, a psychological doctor. A mental doctor. He's a doctor of the mind. And as a man thinking, so is he. Heaviness is an issue in the 21st century. And he said, I give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's the medicine. But just like the man in the wheelchair, when he tries to put the garment of praise on, that people push it off. I'm too sophisticated for that. I'm too intelligent for that. He's trying to put, say, put this on. This will work. Take this three times a day. Give me three praise the Lord. Give me four hallelujahs. It'll work. I'm too smart for that. I need a, 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 a shot of scotch. I will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You can praise your way out of depression. You can praise your way through abandonment issues. You can praise your way after a fight with your siblings. You can praise your way after they have let you go at the plant. You can do a jig in the parking lot where they're looking out the window. <laughs> when they let you go, you ought to get in the parking lot and just break it down. Twirl, turn around in circles. I mean, just do it. I can't do it, but do it. <laughs> Don't cry and go to desk to desk and swear you're going to blow the place up. They're going to lock you up. Dance, man. Put on some music and dance. Throw your head back and dance. God's going to do something big for you. <laughs> I've never seen a righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. He's going to let you start that company. You're going to get a new job. You're going to be able to go home and be with your kids. You crying in front of them sinners for that $9 an hour. Clap your hands for Jesus. Yeah. Clap them harder than that. Yeah. Praise him. That's free medical. That's free medical. Yeah. Amen. The free counseling. Amen. He says in Isaiah 55 and 1, come all that are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come by and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, without price. He got new wine for you. You ain't got to run down to the store. He got milk. That's basic needs for you without cost. He got something that's better than anything the world can manufacture. They be talking about age, 14 years. He got some stuff that's been aged. It's the Holy Spirit. If you will drink from the fountain, it's free counseling. Free counseling, man. Free counseling. But don't say you don't need it.
Amen. His offers never close. You can lay on his couch, which is your bed or your sofa or your throne in the room, that room, that special room. <laughs> and you can say, Lord, and he won't charge you by the hour. But you just got to be honest and say, I need your help. And I guarantee it's better than Obamacare. It's better than Biden care. It's Jesus care. But don't be one of these Christians, amen, who looking down at your nose at all these people parking in the spots with the blue parking. And, you know, oh, I think, ooh, look how bad they walking. Ooh, God, I just think I ain't good. Me. And you got all these issues in your life, and you can't, you can't get your life on track. Right. Amen. Because when Jesus said to them, he says, because you've done it to the least of them, we always take that, that he's just talking about the people who are handicapped physically. But there's some folk that are handicapped physically, they got it together. At least they know how to go home, pay their bills, love their family and their spouses and their children. Amen. Clean their house. They take their wheelchair and wheel it around and clean their house or pay somebody to do it. They got better common sense than some folk who claim they ain't handicapped. And that's what he said. He wants to heal all of you who look like you're doing good, but you know you're sick. So quit ducking and quit dodging the house of porches. And quit standing on your porch, five porches. And that's what we look like. You on one porch because you impotent. And somebody over there blind and you pointing at them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You on a porch too. You lame. But you over there pointing at somebody yeah. who withered. Come on. Yeah, oh my God, they withered. I ought to get over that. You on a porch too. Yeah. You need mercy too. Yeah. And we all need to trouble another water. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I don't know about you, but the spot tells me and reminds me to cry out for his mercy. Because all of us is a work in progress. Come on, stand on your feet. And if you're watching here today, you need mercy. Praise God. 